Hello, welcome back. We're going to continue creating the performer income statement for Peace Blossom in this video. Before we dive into the statement of cash flow, uh, remember that the two statements, statement of cash flows and the balance sheet has to be completed um, simultaneously, which means that there are some items that we need from the balance sheet that, that we need to compute before we can finish the statement of cash flow. And we need to finish the statement of cash flow before we can have the new cash balance that we need to put into current asset. Uh, so what I've done here is to break the process into multiple steps so it's easier for you to understand and it's also more clear in your model. So always create your financial model with the intent of having to explain it to somebody else. Make sure that you uh, if you can explain it to somebody else that means if you have to pick up the same model and modify it or use it uh, six months three months from when you created it you'll be easy for yourself as well so what I've done here is I created the uh, val uh, the I extracted the accounts for current assets and current liabilities so current assets um, again it exclude cash because we need this uh, when we compute the statement of cash flows. So here are uh, and um, before we continue, let's take a look. Uh, uh, you want you, you may want to write this down. Let's take a look at all these items and see which one is going to change at what percentages uh, based on our assumptions. So you go back to um, this assumption here. Um, so basically, everything except cash and inventory. Um, and of course, accounts receivable in current asset will grow at 5.3%. And current liability, um, will include accounts payable, wages payable, taxes payable, and other current asset. All those are going to grow at 5.35%. So your assumption is very clear. Listed inventory, supplies, prepaid expenses, other current assets. So let's take a look at here. So we have inventory, supplies, prepaid expenses, other current assets. We have for liability, accounts payable, wages payable, taxes payable, and other current liability. So when I mentioned that you want your assumptions to be very clearly label this is what I meant so you write down here the growth rate for current assets and current liability you list out all the items that this growth rate applies to so the 5.35 percent applies to all these items and then the 15 percent applies to accounts receivable with that it is easy for us to um to construct the performance statements so for accounts receivable we know is equal to the beginning. So again, we bring in year zero items from the historic uh, financial statements. So the growth rate for that is going to be 15%. Um, for everything else is going to be the 5.35%. And once again, the, this is relatively easy because they are all going to be 5.35%. So now we have um, created this item for year zero. Next, we're going to compute the year to year change. So the year to year change is simply new minus O. So for accounts receivable for year zero, that will be year one minus year zero. So that's our year to year change. And we can copy this Oops. to all the other rows as well. So we have now created, uh, computed the year-to-year -year change as well as the um, forecast for year one. And now we can copy this from year one to year two and year three. So the same thing here, we can copy this from year one um, to the next two years. So we have finished a big part of our job. So these are the year to, the change is what, remember the change in current asset and change in current liability is part of your um, statement of cash flows. So this is part of your change, um, changing cash flows due to operating activities.
Okay, let's scroll down to take a look. So here is our performer statement of cash flows. So net income, we already computed that. We just need to pick that up from the income statement. So we have net income here. And then the next is add back depreciation. So again, we have depreciation from the income statement. And then we need to pick up increases in current assets. So we know that and again, we have computed the change. So we have increase in um, current asset, uh, increase in inventory, increase in supply, increase in prepaid expenses, and increase in other current assets. So again, if you plan your model ahead of time and make sure that they're in the same order, then it makes your job a lot, a lot easier. Okay. So we're going to com compute a, um, a subtotal here for current assets. So here are total increase in our current asset. We do the same thing for current liability. So again, because I have pre-planned our model, so everything is in the same order, uh, I can just copy this. We also have a subtotal for current liability. So now we have our net income, depreciation, current changes, increase in current asset, and increase in current liability. Recall from prior chapters that increase in current asset is a use of cash. So this is an outflow. And increase in current liability is a source of cash. So this is an inflow. So what that means is, um, let's start with one item at a time. So net income, depreciation is a non-cash expense. So when we compute cash flow, we add that back. Increase in current asset is a use of cash, so we have to subtract that. So we spend $8,643 in current asset. Increase in current liability is an inflow, so we're going to add that. So we get an inflow. Not, it, it's more of an opportunity cost concept. What that means is we have credit and therefore we didn't have to spend cash. So we conserve $3,651 in cash because our current liability increase. So here is our cash from operating activities. Next is our increase in fixed assets. We are not totally done with our performance statement of cash flow yet. We, are, we have completed cash from operating activities. But we can go ahead and copy that from year one to years two and three. We're going to uh, switch gear. So the performance uh, cash flow statement is not totally done yet. But we're going to switch gear now to the balance sheet. So we're going to scroll down. And we have already finished the current asset parts, except cash. So we're going to leave that part alone. But we're going to forecast the um, equipment and fixed expenditure and um, depreciation. Because we know that in year one, we're going to increase our equipment by, in our assumption, $300,000. We are not increasing anything else, so those will remain the same. And our accumulated depreciation will increase based on uh, due to our income statement. So our accumulated depreciation is equal to the previous accumulated depreciation minus. This is a counter account in accounting terms. That's why we use a negative number. It's it, it will increase, so we will pick up our most recent uh, year one depreciation. So our accumulated depreciation is going to increase by um, the $85,000. Our net fixed assets is the sum of the, all of this. So when I enter accumulated depreciation as a negative number or a counter account, counter asset account, um, I can sum up um, the total. The formula for year two for fixed for total equipment is different because we will not 
buy any other equipment. For the other items, it's the same. So we can copy that over. So that's fixed assets. And once we finish here in fixed asset, we can look at increase in uh, investing activities. So increase in fixed assets is equal to um, this year's fixed asset minus last year's fixed assets. And you have to, and that doesn't take into account depreciation. So we have to add back depreciation. And you will be the same for the next three years. And not surprisingly, we come up with exactly what we expect to find because we are buying only one equipment for $300,000 in year one, and we're not buying anything else. So the cash use in investing activity is just $300 in year one. Next, we're gonna look at financing activity. Uh, and here you'll notice something again, very um, not very exciting, but it's important to include. So we're gonna switch down to um, long-term liabilities and stockholders equity. You'll notice that uh, for bank loan, it started with zero. And in the assumption area, we did not see any financing assumptions. So we'll just assume it to be zero because that is the assumption. Um, and so our total long-term liability is just our bank loan. And then common stockholder, again, we have no plan, so we assume this to be the same. And accumulative retained earnings, uh, this is equal to last year's retained earning plus the current um, lab, um, owner's equity, but we actually have computed this earlier. This is just the ending balance in owner's equity, so we can just pick that up from our owner's equity calculation. So this is our ending accumulated retained earnings. So again, we have computed that. And total stockholders equity is just the sum of these three items. So notice that, uh, so we have computed the long-term financing, which is long-term liability and also owner's equity. Now let's go back to the cash flow statement. So what is our net new borrowing? Net new borrowing will be long-term liability this year minus last year. Less dividend, dividend, we have it in our dividend strategy. So again, right now is zero. And net new equity issue, this one is a little bit trickier uh, because we have two items. We have par value and also additional pay in surplus. So we have to take the sum of the current balance minus the sum of the period's balance. So we take the sum of par value and additional pay in capital for the current year minus the sum of par value and additional pay in capital for last year. And in this case, again, this is equal to net new borrowing minus dividend plus new equity issue. It will be zero for all three years. And the reason we still include this is because uh, we want to have the option to borrow money. And if we do, we want the model to continue to work. Now that we have cash from operating activity and investing activity and financing activity, we can, we can compute the net change in cash. The net change in cash is, again, this is from prior chapters. So all the formulas that we're using in this chapter, you have learned before, and that's why they are not included here again. Um, please reference what you have done or use the textbook so that you have the formula that, um, that you can, you can um, use handily. So you should be able to create this model on your own. So this is, I guide you through this step by step, but then in your case assignments and also, of course, more importantly, when you go out to work in the future, you have those formulas and you will be able to use form those formulas to create your own financial model.
Okay, so the net, net change in cash is cash from operating activities minus cash used in investing activity and then plus cash from financing activity. So here is our net change in cash for year one, two, and three. And not, not surprisingly, year one is much, much less because we spent $300,000 to buy a new, new piece of equipment. Now let's take a look at our um, cash balance. So the net change in cash, we just picked that up from above. Uh, the ending balance, we take the beginning balance plus the change in cash. And in year two, the beginning balance is equal to last year's ending balance. And this two is the same, so we can copy that over. And here we have finished our ending cash uh, ending balance of cash and short-term investment. Now we have everything we need to complete the current asset portion. So cash and short-term investment, we just computed that. So that's for year one. Accounts receivable, remember we have done those estimates already, so we don't have to do the work twice. We just go up here. Here's accounts receivable. And again, if you set up your model correctly, you always want to double check. You don't want to just blindly make copies. Make sure that they are in the same order. And if they are, you will be able to just copy this down. And total current asset here includes cash. And total asset is total current asset plus net fixed assets. Now we can copy this over to years two and three. The same for here. And current liability, once again, we already did the hard work. So we can pick that up from here. We have computed the new current liability for year one, two, and three. And the total is just the sum. And total liability is current liability plus long-term liability. And we are almost done. The last one, and this is the important one because hopefully when we compute the balance sheet, that it balances. So total liability and owner's equity is equal to total liability plus total stockholder's equity. And voila, our total liability and owner's equity equals to total assets. So our balance sheet balances. Let's copy that to years two and three and hope that it also works. Congratulations, you just finished your pro forma income statements. But we are not totally done yet. Remember, after we created our base model, the key to creating this model is that it enables us to, us to do um, risk analysis. And risk analysis includes sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, and break-even analysis. We're going to do scenario analysis next. So let's go back to the assumptions page. If you scroll down, you see that we have different scenarios included. So the scenario here include uh, here the base case, which is the same assumption that we have seen here. So base case, the growth rate for credit uh, cash sales is two and a half percent, and our cost of goods is forty-eight percent, sixteen percent, and ten percent. So you will see that this is exactly the same as our base case. We also take a look at best case scenario and worst case scenario. In most, uh, most of the time, best case scenario means that our sales is better than expected. So you see that our sales growth rate is higher and our cost is lower than expected. So that's the best, case, the best of both worlds, right? Um, so our cost of goods sold is slightly lower. Uh, the same is true for wages and also for SGNA. 
And the worst case is, of course, the opposite. Sales is not as good and cost is higher. One thing that's very important, students oftentimes make this mistake is they will say, I want to choose the best case. You cannot choose the best case. If we have choices in life that we can control or the, or the environment, uh, it will really, really be wonderful. But life is uncertain. And the reason we do this analysis is to see what our business will look like under all circumstances, especially under the worst case scenario. Thus, our business strategy is still enable, enable us to survive under the worst scenario. So you don't get to choose the cases, but you get to see under the best case, perhaps we can take more dividend. Under the worst case, maybe we need to take our loan. And those are the things that we want to, to, to be able to see. In order to conduct the scenario analysis, the tool we use in Excel is called Scenario Manager. There is a um, limitation in Excel which requires the assumptions and the output to be on the same page. We put the model on a separate page so that we can focus on the assumptions versus the model. So in order to use Excel, we need to pull in the information that we want to uh, focus our analysis on back on the same page. And this also requires you to think through what are the important criteria variable that you want to uh, analyze. In I, I chose this, um, and these are pretty common because this is, is a performance statement. And in performance statement, our focus is looking at our future revenue, future expenses, future net income, and of course, cash flows and cash balances. To get uh, total revenue is very easy. We just pick up, use the equal sign and pick up total revenue from year one. Total expenses requires a little bit more work because expenses is um, kind of all over the place. So and I'm gonna start with the summation sign. So we know here are some of our expenses. And um, another is um, depreciation expense and also interest expense. The rest is much easier. So for net income, we just pick it up from net income, year one. And cash flow from operations. Again, here we scroll down. Uh, we have cash flow from operating activities. They mean the same thing. So here again, um, it's important to be uh, to be knowledgeable in multiple um, terminologies. And then cash balance at the end of year one. Again, we computed that. Here is our ending cash balance. So here is our uh, key financial results for years one, two, and three. Once you have entered this, then we can um, look at the various scenarios. Uh, different people have different um, preferences. Uh, one of the uh, one of my preference is that I want the label to be um, included as part of the changing variables. So I want the base case uh, to be a label. So if you look at the formula here, uh, or the cell in base case is actually a formula. It reference cell B8. So it, and what and you'll see why that is important in a minute. Okay. So the best, the easiest way, or at least my preference, to create scenario is to include to put the values in here first, and then so here is our base case variable, and the function is under data under for what if analysis and under scenario manager. So what you want to do is add a scenario and you can give it a name. So let's say this is your base case. The changing cell is what is important. So the changing cell is what you have create, what you have entered in here. So the changing cell in this case includes cells including the label. So I include a case as well. And you separate, uh, if you, your cells are not continuous, you separate by a comma. 
So here are our assumptions. So that the these are the assumptions that will change from case to case. So we press OK, and we and you have a chance. You have the option to verify the value or input the value directly. Uh, for me, it's easier for me to just put in the correct value to begin with. Now we have created the base case. Next, I'm going to enter the value for the other two cases. So for example, if I have the worst case, I just put the value up there. Again, when I create this, I created the model in the same layout. And therefore, I can easily copy this and put it here. You want to list your scenario out clearly so that you know what your assumptions are. And now that we have, uh, all we have to do is create a new scenario. So go back to what if analysis, so data, what if analysis, scenario manager, and we add another case. This time it is the worst case and the cell is the same. So you don't really have to change anything. And close that. And now we're going to copy the value for the best case in there. And we go back to scenario, um, so data, what if analysis, scenario manager. And this time, this is our best case. And again, we already have the value from the best case in there. We don't have to um, enter them again. And now you have created your three scenarios and you can use the scenario manager. So let's say currently is displaying best case. If I want to look at the worst case, I just highlight the worst case and select show. Now you change everything to the worst case. If I want to go back to the base case, all I have to do is select base case, show, and this will be changed back to the base case. More importantly, because you have, when you change the cases, you will also change the model. So let's take a look. So let's go go ahead and let's look at the worst case. So here our worst case, let's go take a look at the model. Not surprisingly, your sales is much lower and, um, and your cash flow is also much lower. Uh, in fact, you have a negative cash flow in the first year because your cash flow from operating activities is not enough to pay for the $300,000 um, equipment purchase. And you have a much lower cash balance. And because of that, um, you may want to create, uh, print out different scenarios. And this is where the, um, the highlight here is very useful. Instead of printing out the entire set of financial statements, you can simply change each scenario and print out the summary table. So here you see this is the base case. And then if you go and change this to the best case show, and you can see the change instantly. And you can also look at the worst case, you can press show. And you can see this is the worst case and these are the corresponding revenue expenses and cash flow. So this is why you want to create a decision variable or a, high, or a summary table here that allow you to quickly ex, um, determine what the impact is um, under different scenario. Good luck. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, performance statements for a new business.